Now, this teaching is not for people who want to go out and live according to wickedness and evil. You can do what you want. But if you have made a declaration to have a righteous family, you have to understand that your family is under the order and law of God. And when you look at these scriptures, I hope it helps you because it's going to show you there's some things that we've been doing in our life. There's some things we've been doing in discipline. There's some things we've been doing in a covenant called marriage that we're not allowed to do because God does not even give us the jurisdiction to do it. But we think because we're some type of dictator, or we're some type of ruler that we can do it because that's my children or that's my spouse or this. And we're so arrogant and we're so uh, uh, wicked in our thinking. And we become we start doing things not knowing that we have a responsibility to God. The first book I want to go into is in the book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse 17. And the scripture says, if you train your children, they will give you peace. How many know that in order for you to have a successful family, you're going to have to train them in the knowledge of God? I'm going to say it again. In order to have a successful family, they are going to, you're, you're going to have to train your children in the knowledge of God. And if you don't train them to be prepared to love God, to know God, how many of you know you're going to create a mess? How many of you know you're going to create chaos? How many of you know that you're going to create dysfunction? I'm saying it again. You're going to create a mess. You're going to create chaos. You're going to create dysfunction. You're going to create children who are going to live lawless. Amen? They're going to take matters in their own hands, and they're going to do things with their life that God never allowed for them to do. So the scripture says, if you train your children, they will give you peace. How many know you need some peace in your house? Yes. The first thing as a righteous parent is you should always remind your children of their duty to God. You should always remind them that they belong to God. Amen. And because they belong to God and because the family that you created with your spouse is belongs to God and follow God, they cannot do anything that they want in the body that God has given them. We know in the book of Joshua, he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, he was saying, listen, they got all these other nations. They serve all kind of other gods. But as for me and my house, we have made a choice to be submitted to the living God. And that's how you have to be with your children, because when you make your relationship with God, a choice to your children, then how many of you know they're going to have other choices That's right. and make other determinations? You say, well, man of God, what, what does that mean? It sounds like you're making them a dictator. No, I'm not. I'm not being a dictator. What I'm doing is I'm setting a precedent over my house yes. yeah. through knowledge and wisdom because knowledge and wisdom will guide them into a path where they will live a satisfied life. But if I don't give them knowledge and wisdom, how many of you know that your children will grow up to be a fool? How many kids you know, maybe your nephews or your nieces, they grow up, they're 50 years old, they still act like a 15-year-old because their parents didn't train them up in instruction. So he says, if you train your children, they will give you peace and they will... Bring delight to you. I want to go into Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. We know this scripture. Whoever spares the rod, looks what it says, hates their children. But the one who loves their children, watch this, there's a key word, you see it on the screen, is careful to discipline them. Yes. Yes. 
is careful to discipline them. You have to learn how to discipline your children carefully. Everything that your child does don't deserve you taking out a belt or a stitching cord. A lot of people say, well, matter of God, that's how my parents was raised. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to bust up their butt because my mama bust my butt. My daddy bust my butt and it worked for me. But the scripture says your discipline has to be given in the way carefully. The reason why you want to take out your belt and whoop everybody is because you don't have patience. The reason why you want to take out that extension card is because you don't have long suffering. And so what you do is on the basis of a dictatorship and intimidation. I've heard it. I ain't no, ain't no, your, your daughters, are, you know, mothers and daughters usually have that time when that child becomes 15 and 16 and they're button heads. Only going to be one woman in this house. You know the, the conversations. And so what happens is you start disciplining out of ignorance and not out of wisdom. But because children are a gift, how I many you know that your children are a gift from God? Every child that God has given you is a gift. You say, my child ain't a gift. Well, they've been out in the world. They've been out in the street. They've been drinking. They've been smoking marijuana. They ain't no gift. How many of there are people in this world who cannot even produce children? There are women today that they were born not even with the physical capacity to birth a child. The, me the mechanism is there, but they can't bring a child out of their birthing canal. So the fact that God has given you the ability to have all the components to bring a child in this world and for you to have the joy and delight of raising a child and the instruction of the Lord, that's a gift in itself, whether you see it or not. So because God has given you children, it shows that he loves you because it shows that you're willing to be committed to something. Well, man of God, what are you saying? What about all the deadbeats? What about all the mamas who turn their children over? We're not talking about ignorance here. When I teach the word of God, I'm not teaching from a place of ignorance. I'm teaching about God's plan. Anybody who has a child or who makes a child should understand the responsibility that it entails with creating a child. And if we're going to deal with righteous family, creating a righteous family, then you need to know what this word says about being a righteous parent and your responsibility to your children. So the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Now, why am I disciplining them? Because I understand that if they don't get the discipline in this household, somebody won't be as careful or as cautious as me. You've seen it, especially over the last three years of police brutality. Amen. You know, Pastor Walker, you have one son who's a great man of God who's doing great things. But you understood that when you birthed that son in the world, the world is not going to look at your son how you look at him, as in. Amen. You might see him as the most wonderful thing in this world. But the police... Or we're going to look at him as a statistic or another black man in society. So now as a parent, Pastor Toronto, I have to give my children instructions to be able to live a successful life so that they won't have to pay the penalty later. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, watch this, he will not depart from the instruction and training. Your children may have said when they were teenagers, mom and daddy, you're too hard on us. All my friends, they can do this. They can go out Friday night, but they don't understand the spiritual ramifications of going out Friday night. They don't understand the spiritual ramifications of being at your boyfriend's house till three in the morning. And so maybe all your friends are doing it, 
but they are living in the house with fools who don't understand wisdom to protect their children from a multitude of sin that can happen if they don't understand instruction. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 141 verse 5, if a person who does what is right were to strike me, it would be an act of kindness. Listen, if I'm doing the wrong thing, I want somebody to let me know, listen, bro, that's not the right way. Especially if they love me enough to say, hey, man, the road that you're going down will be a path to destruction. Because maybe, Pastor Walker, the next person who meets me won't be so kind to tell me what I'm doing is wrong. Maybe that might be the person that destroys my purpose. How many people today that we see in America that are living in jail cells all across America and state and federal, in, in, in state, federal penitentiary that their purpose, Pastor Toronto, in life has been destroyed? The judge look at them 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, life, 100 years. Now they, they, now they do something They say 100 years times life sentence. Because what happened is, uh, Pastor Lee, they would, they would say 50 years, then the person would live to be 90 and come out. So now they got smart. They say, you know what? We're going to give you 100 years. We know you ain't going to live that. But even if you live 100 years, like another life sentence. So you've got to be careful to give wise instruction. Listen to what it says in Psalms 141 verse 5. If that person were to correct me, it would be like pouring olive oil on my head. I wouldn't say no to it. But I always pray against the things that sinful people do. How many know that sinful people are on a road to destruction, whether they know it or not. You know, especially when you start to come into salvation and maybe you have some carnal friends, you start to look at them and say, well, God, it don't look like you doing anything to them. I'm saved, but I'm saved and struggling. I'm saved and it feels like when you're young, you're youthful. I don't, I'm not having a good time. I don't have no friends in church. I got friends in the world. They're doing all these different things. It seems like if I go back down that road, they ain't getting destroyed. So I ain't going to get destroyed. But you don't know, the Bible says it's a path. Yes. And they don't even know and understand the repercussions and the consequences of their actions. You have to be very careful because there are consequences in every action that you do in this life and in this body. Yes. Heaven never said there's consequences. This is what it says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 5. Folly. Type in and say folly. folly. Now, what is folly, brother Mike? Folly is foolishness. When you're youthful, you entertain a lot of foolishness. When you're in youth, you don't believe nothing's going to happen to you. When you are youth, you think you're invincible. invincible. Now, many of you, all of you in this building are saved now, but think about when you were a teenager and whatever you did, we all did foolish things, and your friends went out on the weekend or maybe they skipped class, played hooky, that's what they used to call it, and you went out with them, and you, you thought in your mind, well, ain't nobody going to see me. You know, maybe we'll go out, go get uh, some breakfast, and we'll be back, back, second period, third period, fourth period. Nobody would know. My, my high school is too big. But how many of you know that those decisions that you made was open you up for an increased sinful lifestyle? And so you were making decisions in this body not knowing what you were creating was a sinful appetite. And maybe something simple, Pastor Toronto, as playing hooky was something, oh, my mom wouldn't care. Maybe you had a cool mom. My mom don't care. My parents don't care. But what it did is, even if you were not dealt with with your behavior, what it did was create a simple appetite 
for you to look at sin and think nothing will happen to you. Watch this. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. So a child knows folly even when they are adolescent. It's bound up in them. Many of you got grandchildren. Pastor Lee, you have grandchildren. Uh, Dr. Walker has dream who comes down, whose joy is always ever smile, smile. But how many know that, that she has folly in her? Yeah. Abigail, who's Trail's baby, has folly in her. Say, so, wow, man, I got don't talk about my baby. But they know it's instinctively in them. That's right. That's right. You know, I seen dream one time. I think, I think that was uh, Sister Rose home going. She had picked up something she was looking at. Pastor Walker, as you do that, you look at her. I said, she already know what to do. Because it's bound up in our heart. But the scripture says, watch this. The rod of discipline will drive the folly far away. And that's why you have to discipline your children. Because if you don't, what you will do, Pastor Toronto, is you will open them up to an appetite of dysfunction. And today, we're seeing that the family structure in America, especially in the inner city, is out of whack. There's no respect, Pastor Walker, for, listen, there's no respect for elders today, especially in New Orleans. You won't even see, you go to Walmart or Winn-Dixie, people will walk right in front of you. Don't even see that you're elderly, don't even try to help you. There was a time where there was some, some moments of respect and reverence. But because we now live in chaos, which has become an, our new normal, it has totally warped our society because we have a new generation that does not want to discipline their children with instruction and wisdom. I didn't say to beat them over the head. I didn't say just whip them and, and try to kill them. I said with wisdom and instruction. That's different. Now, how many know that your children are going to make a bunch of foolish decisions? Because they live in this world, and you know at this time in this society, we're probably living in the, in, in the most wicked parts of society we've ever seen in our life. So they're going to make decisions, and it's your job to cover them and protect them as a parent with whatever decision that they make. Now, covering and protecting as a parent, listen to me quickly, does not mean that you agree with what they're doing. You got parents today? Um, Dr. Walker was in.